Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com. It's Monday. It's April 4th. This will be our chart lesson for the day. And and the months are moving right along. It seems like we just had Christmas break. And uh, now we've already had spring break. And we're moving into April. Uh, spring is here. Definitely where I'm at. Nice, beautiful day today. I hate to even be inside. Um, Hope it's like this on Friday, because if it is, I'll be on the golf course Friday. <laughs> but anyway, let's let's get to our chart lesson. Uh, it looked like a range. It looked like it was going to be a range day today. We do have this channel working lower here. Um, we had an overshoot here, and we didn't get a break till here. Um, and but early on, I was playing this really like a range and just following the shorter term uh, trend lines. And really, if you followed the shorter term trend lines today, you did much better. Uh, I'm, I've got a square down here just because I want to talk about this. Trader couldn't figure out. He went short right here and it failed on him. Uh, the trader couldn't figure out why it failed. But you got a trend line. You've already had a break of your channel and a new low, so you're looking for a possible reversal anyway, so you need to be real careful going short regardless. But when you got a trend line working up, you, you can't go short until you get the notice you get the break, the new high, and then it went down. If you'd waited and just been patient, uh, it would have played out perfectly. But you got to let the correction, these corrections are trends as well, and you got to let those play out. They don't want, you don't always, like in this case, you got a little spike and channel here on what looked like a range day. So you think this is going to go higher, but it turns down right here. Uh, but you got to be careful getting short until the trend plays out. Um, and notice there's a short right here, but notice I didn't mark it because you, ha you just had your first break of this channel. And you got a lot of overlap right there, and you're right into that EMA. Yeah, it worked this time, but the next time you try it right here, it fails on you. So you got to follow the rules. And look, it, even though it went lower, it still it tried once, twice, three, four times. It tried to make a new high before it actually took off and went lower. So it still was trying to play out, but it couldn't because of the larger trend line. And that really... When, once you got all these failures here, that really clued you in that hey, this trend line must be valid because we can't even we can't close through it. We pushed through it several times there, but we couldn't close through it. So keep that in mind. You, you got trend lines working in both directions. Notice how we're swinging back and forth above and below the EMA. We got a pretty strong downtrend right here, pretty strong here and here, but all along we're still swinging back through the EMA. So that lets you know that it's, it's somewhat of a range day and it's more neutral, even though there's a downward bias to this entire day. It's a kind of a downward, uh, slightly neutral. So um, it's more down, but it still has a slight neutral tint to it. And you can often trade that both ways. Uh, notice that most of your really good trades were to the downside and, there, and most of your longs were greens. There's a couple of blues in here but they're mostly green. So uh, just keep that in mind. And this trader asked me about this trade right here. And let me just talk about that before we get started on the trades. But you've already had a break of your main trend line and a new low. So you gotta be real careful about getting short. Look, look how bullish this is, it's straight up. No, no real hesitation at all at the EMA. You got a little bit at the trend line and it pushes through, it pulls back. And that's your first close outside that trend line working higher when you're looking for a possible reversal. So even though there's a second entry, there, actually, it's not even a second entry on my chart. It's a first entry. So this was your really good entry, but it's after 2 o'clock, so I didn't mark it. But that would have been a nice setup there. Uh, but on my chart, that's a first entry, but uh, this trader had a first entry, then it pulled back in second entry, and they couldn't figure out why it failed right here. Well, that's why, because you got a trend line working up, and that's your first close outside, so it's going to make a retest attempt, most likely. 90% of the time, it's going to make one. Here, it tried to make one. It couldn't get there, and it failed and went lower. But notice you don't have a short here until your failed second entry long. Same thing here, and it continued to fail. And it's, you know, so just keep that in mind because I get that question a lot. And people are just missing that part completely. Uh, 
especially on a more of day that has kind of a neutral bias. But early on when I came in, we had this trend working up. We had a close outside move to a new high. And uh, I wish I'd have been here for this because this would have been a nice short right here. Um, but prices were trending down when I came in. And then you pull back and you get a failed second entry uh, long right here. It's kind of a breakout pullback short and everything's, look how it went right through the EMA. That's, that's your first signal of a reversal. I say that all the time. And I had a trader send me an email to, I think it was this morning. And he's just now noticing that. But I talk about it all the time. He just never heard it evidently or he never put it together. Prices shoot right through that EMA. That's your first signal. Normally you're going to get some, some, you got a little bit of support there. But it quickly fell right on through. Uh, if you're really getting support, you should get a bounce there. And when it shoots right through, that's your first clue. Hey, something's changed. Because look how we couldn't get below the EMA. And then we shoot right through. Then it pulls back. It tests it and turns down. That's a reversal pattern, especially on a failed second entry long. Notice the new eye. Pull back first entry. Pull back second entry. And you got several clues there and then look at that big bearish that's, that is the setup of the day take it and then you get another one here it tries to go higher one more time and turns down that's basically the same thing as a breakout pullback short but this is a double top so that could be a new high that's another failed second entry long just go short right there and even then it takes it a minute but that turns out to be uh you probably didn't get a runner on this one depending on how you entered but if you didn't you would have gotten one here for sure. And I, and if you weren't out of this one, I like adding on right there. And that, that right one trade right there, uh, a runner down to the overnight low, that's where I would have exited. And you would have exited, by doing that, you would have exited within three ticks of that low on that move. And that's a great move. That's a great setup. Everything's picture perfect there. That's price action 101 right there. And then notice that's the first close outside that channel. And you actually get a second entry short right there. Um, I didn't like that one because of all the overlap. Plus there's your trend line working up. That's your first close outside. Then it tried to go higher and failed. So I like going short right there, trying to catch that retest for the new low. And uh, actually I missed this one. Um, I actually marked this one as a green one. There's there's a lot of overlap. Look how far we are away from the EMA. Look how long it's been. And you've already got your overnight lows there. So you're pro you know, the odds are really, really strong, even without a close outside that trend line, that you're coming back to the EMA. And that's exactly what happens. So I like that one. You don't want to go long here now, it's too late. And you can't, you got to wait on a short after the break. And, there, and this is one of those cases where it couldn't get back through the EMA. So it never makes a retest. Uh, it never, it, it attempts a retest, but it's not successful. And then it turns down and it doesn't quite make a new low or otherwise I probably would have drawn this one red because uh, you're still a good bit away from the EMA and you've got another bounce right there at those same lows. Um, so I like that one. Uh, it's, I did make it green because we didn't quite get a new low and that's a fairly bullish bar. Even though it looks like a doji, it's, you know, closed within a tick off its high. And if you catch that one, you got another runner that's running pretty well. And at this point, you're probably thinking prices may be going back to here. Notice how it shoots right through the EMA again, pulls back, goes lower first and then goes right out the other side. You can go long right there. Or if you want to put a stop right there, or if you want to let it break higher and then maybe get a little better entry, you would have gotten a tick or so back in this bar and it heads on up. And then this is like a little spike and channel right here. And, uh, this is your first break. So I didn't like going short there, even though you really get a confirmation on that trend line. I, I don't like it because um, it may just pull back to the EMA and then push up real quick. It actually gets through the EMA and then comes back and you get a first entry and then it tries to go higher again and it's going to trap people. And look at that bearish that bar is. I like going short right there. And then it pulls back again. You really could have gone short there, but it 
turned higher and then went out the other side first. So just jump in right there when it goes out the other side or already have your stop there. And this is almost a little repeat pattern of right over in here. And then it pulls back and it gives you another in entry here. Um, this is a doji, but it's a failed second entry long, so it doesn't matter. Just go short right there. And look, there's another great entry. And you can ride that all the way down until you get your first break maybe right there. Or if you had the trend line, if you found this, I would exit a tick or so above that, and then again, you would have gotten out within a tick or two of the very low. It's the way I like to normally do it. Sometimes you'll get out too early, but most of the times you'll get out at the perfect spot. And then we bounce off here, and notice there's no break of this trend coming down. That's your first one. You get a first entry, pull back second entry. You could have considered going short there. I don't like it because it's right into the low of the day. And there's not a lot of room there, and there's too big odds. You get one tick more, and it bounces, and that's exactly what happened. It, it gets one tick. Maybe it went more than, maybe it went two ticks, but. Yep, you got two ticks. It went two ticks lower than bounce, and that's why you got to be careful of going short at the low of the day. And so I like right catching on that one to catch it to the other side. It's a little bit aggressive. Uh, you're not that far away from the EMA here by the time this bar closes. So you got to be careful with it, but uh, I still like it. And there's actually a failed second entry short here, but you got the trend line and the trend channel working higher, and you got to go long right into that. So I don't like that one. Um, we pull back here, and it makes this double bottom. And really, you got two measured legs up, and this fails. So you should have gone lower here if you're going lower. But notice what we're doing here. Notice how we push through that midline. What normally happens when you push through a strong support and resistance area? It comes back and tests it. So that's the pullback to test that, and look how it bounces right off of it. And this is where prices should be going, to the upper side of the trend channel line. So I like going long there. And guess why you can't go short here? Because you don't have a break of this short-term channel. You're not back to the key entry point. Uh, several different reasons. So uh, this takes a while to put all this together. This is all second nature to me now. But when you're new, you can't remember all this stuff. And it takes a while to learn it and see it all enough times to where it becomes second nature. So that's one of the reasons why this takes so long to learn. But that was a great long. And once again, you got a runner going. You know, you might have wanted to exit right here. This is a good example of why exiting sometimes right there is too early. You might wait till the first break, and there it is right there. And if you exit right there, you get out within three or four ticks of the top. And then now it's going the other way again. Because this is the first break of the main channel here. So uh, I drew this one green. You're a good bit away from the EMA. You've had your break and a huge move up. There's actually two legs there. Um, so on a smaller scale, this would be a second entry short right here. Um, but it's a little bit aggressive. And you get a second entry here counting off the high and, <laughs> excuse me, and the low. Pull back first entry, pull back second entry. But it's right into that double bottom, right into the EMA. Okay, I had a slight interruption, but I... We were talking about this, how it's right into that EMA, and we don't have the, uh, well, actually, we do have the new high, but I didn't like that second entry because the bar is too bullish, and it's right into the EMA. So just kind of wait and see what happens. And then when it turns higher again, and that's a double test of that high right there, and turns down, just go short right there now. Now you've got your double test rule in place, and look at the bottom falls out of it. If you caught that one trade and the runner, ride it all the way down and if you just chose to you know follow this till you got the first break uh, close outside and the bar above it which is right here and you get out almost at the very bottom of that but it's moving down pulls back um, notice that's a previous support and resistance and it doesn't hold at all here it pushes right through pulls back and test it from underneath test under that's that reversal pattern go short right there and boom it's off to the races and um, 
and that's a double top notice that's a double another little double top there so you could treat that like a first entry and it's like a failed second entry and notice nothing closes outside that trend line really so look at it go and again you caught a runner here you could have caught a runner on either one of any three of these trades and that's your first break of this trend line here so you're probably going to try a retest attempt even though you got a new low in place for the bigger channel you're probably going to get a retest may not be successful here but we're probably going to try it so um, that's the reason i don't like that short and you really got a couple of bars stacked up it's everything's above the ema um, and that's a first entry and it pulls back and this is a second entry. that's the setup right there you got the break or the close outside the move to a new high a nice bearish bar on a second entry i love that setup and if you want to wait on the second entry off the high unless you got a little higher low and a big bearish bar there go short right there but it's after two o'clock so i didn't mark it <clears throat> so and i will say this i say this occasionally maybe i don't say this one enough but the reason i don't trade after two is once you get after two o'clock you seem to it seems to get a little hairier you get more swings and moves each direction it's just not as it's not as uh, markets just mu much more predictable before noon in my opinion for whatever reason i just believe that a lot of the bigger traders the the ones that move the market are done a lot of times late in the afternoon and so they are not there's more just smaller traders fighting against each other um, it doesn't mean you won't get some good moves after two o'clock i've seen it run straight up or straight down at two o'clock before but um, it just seems that you don't have as many weird things or traps and things like that that are going on in the afternoon so for whatever reason but there's today a uh, really nice day uh, pretty straightforward today especially if you drew your shorter term trend lines but just remember on this correction this is a short term trend in the opposite direction and it's a and it's a correction in the bigger picture here every one of these moves up is just a correction in a bigger downtrend kind of day but those are still trends and you got to let them play out you know just like here it looks like this one's played out early and, and something's getting stronger but they trap people and run it straight up so follow the rules even on your short term ones at least wait on the uh, wait on the uh, attempt unless you just get a trend that just keeps going then then get on with that trend so I hope that's clear um, Hope you had a good trading day, but this was a fairly decent day. Um, it's, it's not like some of those runaway trends we've had a few of lately, but it's still a pretty good move day. I mean, we went from 20, 2071 or two area down to 2050. So about a 20 point move from top to bottom with some nice corrections to the upside in between. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. We'll be back again to do it tomorrow. This is Matt with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.